Today we have the Trade Commissioner of Cyprus, Aristo Constantine, speaking to us about the many products of Cyprus. Welcome, Aristo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, uh, thrilled to be here. But what would it be like to be a visitor to Cyprus? What else might we know about it? Well, well as you said, Cyprus is a very special place. It's very unique in terms of, um, of its personality, if you like. Um, we have a very, very long history, uh, talking about thousands of years, not hundreds. And um, because Cyprus has been uh, <clears throat> under the rule of various different empires throughout the course of history, um, Greek, Roman, Ottoman, Byzantine, uh, when you visit Cyprus, elements throughout history are present there. So it's almost like a, an open-air museum where you can walk into, say, um, you know, view ruins from ancient Rome, view Ottoman mosques, uh, Greek temples, amphitheaters. Uh, there's, you know, history going back 10,000 years. And that's a long time. Now, you uh, told me a little bit about the very, very long history of Cypriot wines and that there are even some biblical references. Can yes. you tell a little more about that? Well, Cyprus is actually the um, one of the West, world's oldest uh, uh, wine producing countries in the world with uh, wine production going back approximately 5,000 years BC, so 7,000 years in the making. Um, so how do we know this? Oh, this, this is, documented? Yeah, uh, this is documented archaeologically, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I think uh, the Cary Institute, which is the U.S. Archaeological Institute, um, mm -hmm. Italian Archaeological uh, Foundation, uh, has been in Cyprus, and everyone enjoys all archaeological from all over the world. All archaeological uh, institutes come to Cyprus because it's, as I said, uh, a wealth of uh, history to be found in a very small place. Um, it's like a, an archaeologist's dream come true, I suppose. Um, in fact, we still produce the oldest wine still in production, uh, Comandaria which uh, has been produced since uh, 1000 BC, it's 3000 years now, uh, continuously. <laughs> been making the same wine for 3000 years. That's an excellent record. It is, it is. And in fact, if I may quote uh, Olivier Poussier, who was the world's best sommelier in 2000, he said, uh, among some of the world's most famous wines, one stands out, Comandaria, Ambrosia from Cyprus. Mm. So, um, the for nectar those, of the gods. The nectar of the gods, yes. It has, and, and, and Comandaria, not because I'm Cypriot myself, um, although it may bias me, I suppose, is, is a phenomenal product. I mean, uh, like nothing else. So those who haven't tried it must. Now, you were saying that there are some uh, wine regions that have been newly defined? Well, um, yes, yeah, since you are accession to the European Union, the vinification, well, the, the wine producing sector has reorganized and, and um, there are four uh, uh, wine producing regions with appellation of origin, uh, controlled origin uh, in Cyprus. Um, the focus lately has been, much as it has been in Greece, and, and uh, the interest from the rest of the world, I suppose, dictates that as well, in rediscovering the indigenous grape varietals of Cyprus, which are, um, and another note of interest is that Cyprus is one of the few phylloxera free regions in the world, which means yeah. it was never affected by the, uh, the vine lapse. Uh, That's please. a disease that can really wipe out your vineyards. Right. So, they, so what that means is that the vines in Cyprus are the original stock vines, which means they retain their classic um, characteristics, if you like, and they have a long life. They're old, old, old vines. Um, there are about 15 indigenous grape varieties in Cyprus currently known. Uh, about four of those are um, predominantly uh, cultivated for wine production. Xinisteri, um, which is a white. Mavro, which translated simply means black, it's a black grape, uh, Ophthalmo, and Maratheftico, which produces some phenomenal uh, wines. And there's a great, there's been a great deal of commitment and investment, actually, by the uh, wine industry in um, rediscovering these grapes and producing superior quality wines that truly represent the character of the country and the 4,000, 5,000 year history of winemaking. So now these these wines are being exported and Absolutely, people yes. are enjoying we're them. We're still all over. yes, we're, we're, yeah, it's um, we're we're building up momentum abroad in that you know these these wines have been enjoyed in the region in Greece and in Cyprus uh, and have been well known uh, for many many years. But we're only recently reaching out to uh, countries like the U.S. and we feel strongly that we have a great deal to offer. Um, that we provide an alternative, I suppose, to the dominant grape varietals that are on the shelves. Um, 
giving something entirely unique and unfortunately limited. I say unfortunately because it would be wonderful if I could produce enough wine to, for the whole world to drink, but we're a very small country. And that was going to be my right. next question. Uh, <laughs> where can we expect to see this? Can we expect that this will, that you'll, will not be that available? Um, it will, well, we, we, we have a, um, a pretty broad distribution, which is growing continuously. But um, yes, most of these wines are limited in production, so it's not something you're going to find in your supermarket shelves. It's uh, a unique and specialized. Uh, Do Cypriot vineyards and wineries um, have the, the capacity to grow and to meet the demand? Yes, I think so, but whenever, whenever a winery uh, is meeting the challenge of, of increasing its, its um, supply, it has to be very careful in doing that, because obviously if you're um, taking on vineyards that you, know, you haven't, uh, you, uh, how do you say, um, you're not familiar with, you risk affecting the quality the of your wine, so as you over your wine. So it's um, it's very often something that wineries don't want to do. They would rather not sell it than risk. Um, I see. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, what are some of the other products that we should be thinking of when we think of Cyprus? Well, yeah, we're talking about Cyprus. Um, given that we're just such a little country, but um, nevertheless within Europe at least, we have one of the longest lists of unique of uh, products of geographic indication, which means products that were are uniquely mm -hmm. Cypriot. And uh, nowhere else. And nowhere else. That they were first made there, and although maybe they've been copied and, and whatnot, they are Cypriot in origin. Uh, take halloumi, for instance, which I'm sure many of you have uh, come to love. The cheese. The cheese that yes. doesn't melt and the cheese you can that grills. barbecue it. Absolutely. Grills, fries. Um, Eaten raw with fruit uh, pairs wonderfully with, uh, especially in the summer, with wines and whatnot. Um, trademarked in the U.S. and now available, I believe, in pretty much most uh, major supermarket chains, Costco's, Whole Foods, um, uh, and I think we'll be seeing a lot more of, of this uh, special cheese from this little island. To be called real halloumi, must it come? It must from, come it's from. It's not Cyprus. a process. No. It must come from. Cyprus. It must come from Cyprus. Um, and there's there's a lot to do with that. It's not just because it's Cypriot and it has a trademark. There is, in order to produce halloumi, there is a process. There is a um, uh, which is controlled and, and overseen by the government, and requirements have to be met. So, if someone, let's say, in, I won't name a country, but if someone is producing halloumi and calls it halloumi locally, it's a salty cheese that has the, mm -hmm. the texture, doesn't make it halloumi. I see. <laughs> um, but besides just the cheese, um, again, we're talking about a Mediterranean country and all Mediterranean countries, Italy, Greece, Spain, you know, every, um, we all have similar products, the olive oil, you know, the cheeses mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, and each one of us has our own identity and character. Um, and the same is, is true for Cyprus. Uh, we export honey, uh, honey pastes, uh, flake salt actually, because we have a huge salt lake in Cyprus which produces wonderful salt mm -hmm. that's become very popular, especially in gourmet restaurants. Um, so it's kind of like the Dead Sea? Not quite, <laughs> no, not quite, no. It's an inland salt lake. The Dead mm -hmm. Sea is, is huge. But um, we, we but the same the, that's the the same reason why it has salt. Right. It was it was yes. part of the ocean which closed off, yes. and that's how salt lakes are formed. And in, in a certain region in Cyprus has uh, brought in. We have flamingos in every summer. It's beautiful actually. Um, so we do a lot of salt production and um, spices, oregano, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. olive oil. Um, but our focus has always been on producing very high quality because uh, we have to simply because we have a limited production and because we enjoy eating well. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so those who buy our products share in that as, as well. Um, uh, that's probably why I suppose we don't have that huge amount of exposure in the mass market, just because we've never really been that interested in the mass market. Um, but now it's time. But now it's time. It's time for us all to be looking for <laughs> exactly. these, all these products from Cyprus exactly right. and, uh, mm -hmm. and to be asking for that. Excellent. Well. Thank you very much Thank for you. talking to us today about um, all the great things about Cyprus, and we've learned a lot. Thank you very much.